Hello and welcome to SQL Server Analysis Services 108, Creating Hierarchies in SSAS Dimensions. In the previous video I spent quite a lot of time showing you how to create dimensions. Fortunately, this video is going to be a lot shorter, but it covers a very important topic, which of course is creating these hierarchies. This is something that you'll want to do probably in almost every cube you work with, and I'll explain why as I move through the slides. Now most dimensions contain data that is in a hierarchical structure by nature. That doesn't mean every attribute contributes to the hierarchy, but there are attributes in there that are hierarchical by nature. Time is a, a really easy example. Years can break down into semesters or quarters. Those quarters can break down into months. Months may break down into weeks and then days. Uh, you may go straight from year to quarter to week today. Uh, you know there are various options. Some people have other concepts they put in of periods. I've worked with some retail uh, companies before, where they look at a period such as uh, you know it might be the four days uh, of the kickoff of the or the the three day weekend uh, after Thanksgiving in the United States when the uh, traditional Christmas shopping rush begins. So that's a three-day period for them. It, it doesn't fit into a normal calendar, but it's something that they want to analyze by. Uh, geography is another common example. Different companies break uh, the world down differently. They may go country to state province to city to postal code. I've seen sales territories that are country and then regions and zones and and then could be cities or a city may be broken across multiple zones just depends on the size of the city and so on but they have a way of going from a high level of information down to a very detailed level of information and that's really what hierarchies are all about they're how users expect to see the data and be able to drill down and analyze data so generally again you start at a very high level you got more and more detailed and that's important if you think about it. If you're going all the way down to individual customers, you may have tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, even millions of individual customers. It, without a hierarchy, if you just grab the attribute for customer at the lowest level and brought it over, you'd have to sit there and wait while it retrieved all those customers. Whereas if you have a hierarchy and you drill down to, let's say, a postal code and then go from there to the customers, you're only getting the set of customers in that particular postal code. So you have a much smaller set that's being returned and consequently you're not waiting for tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, or millions of customers to stream across from the server to your machine and then load up in whatever analytics program you happen to be using. Now a dimension in analysis services actually doesn't have to have any hierarchies built for it but you typically do have at least one and sometimes many hierarchies. There's, there's probably a, a, a limit, but I don't know what it would be. You can certainly have multiple hierarchies. Now, I just mentioned that they are not required in 2005 or 2008. This is different if you're coming from the 2000 world, where that's really all you had. You couldn't do attributes by themselves, you had to have them as part of a hierarchical structure. Well, because you can have each attribute acting as its own attribute hierarchy, as they call it, you don't have to build these uh, user hierarchies, these multi-level hierarchies, but you don't really want to expect your users to always drag all of those attributes over in the correct order every time in order to do their analysis. So building these hierarchies is very important for giving users a good experience in using the cube and browsing the data and gaining value from it. I, I mentioned on the slide too a best practice and that is to hide any attribute hierarchies, in other words the attributes, once you've added them to a multi-level or user hierarchy. In other words, if you take that attribute and make it part of a hierarchy you expect a person to roll down on, don't let them also drag it over as its own attribute hierarchy. And I'll show some examples of that in just a moment when I get into building these hierarchies for you. All right, one more slide before I get into the demo here. Just some 
uh, two terms really, levels and member. A hierarchy is made up of multiple levels. So year, quarter, month, day, for example, those are four levels of a hierarchy. Same thing with country, state, province, city, and postal code. Those are levels of a hierarchy. Each one of those represents a level. So you have levels. Well, basically you have a dimension. Let's say you have the time dimension. Then you have a hierarchy. You give it a name. We'll say, for example, calendar. And then within that you have levels, year, quarter, month, and day. Then within each level you have specific members. So in the year level, you would have 2005, 2006, 2007, 2008. Each one of those is a member at the year level of the calendar hierarchy of the time dimension. So you can see that this is a very hierarchical structure anyway, and that's how you can actually refer to things in code, as, as you'll see uh, in much later videos. But that's just a little bit of terminology to talk about. And with that, I'll jump into Analysis Services, uh, well, BI Dev Studio to show you how to do this. Now, uh, before I go in, just a quick note. I will be doing this in analysis in a BI Dev Studio 2005. There's only one slight difference in 2008, uh, and I'll point that out when I get into it. Here I am in BI Dev Studio 2005, and this is the customer dimension I was working on in the previous video. And I'm going to make a couple of quick changes to it. First of all, you'll notice there is an attribute here called country. And if I select that, you'll see that the ID, if I expand this a little bit, is actually English country region name. Well, yes, I do have the English country region name, but I also have an in a country region code. And so what I'm going to do is get rid of country here, and I'm simply right-clicking on it and saying delete. And I'm going to bring over the country region code and just drop it in the attributes and notice it adds it as an attribute. Same thing with state province name. This time I'll just hit the delete key. I'm going to bring over the state province code. Now, even though I brought over the codes, I don't want to display those to a user when they're doing their analysis. I want them to actually see the text. So I'm going to choose country region code and the first thing I'm going to do is name it back to simply country. And if I scroll down, you'll notice that there are a couple of attributes. One is the key column. And the key column is currently the country region code. That's what this column is, and that is correct. But for the name, what I want someone to actually see, I can change that. So I'm going to drop this down and choose new. It's kind of strange choosing new. It would be nice if it just gave you a list of the columns, but there are a couple of other things you can do. So at this point, make sure your binding type is column binding, and I will choose the English country region name. So that's basically going to be acting on the region code behind the scenes, but showing me the, re the English country region name. That's uh, just a more efficient way of doing things. State province code, I'm simply going to rename that to state province. And again, down here in the key column, it is state province code, but I want to change the name column, choose new, and then I'm going to change that to the state province name. So that's just going to clean this up a little bit. City is already uh, that city name. And if you remember, on dim customer, Walking through the wizard, it asked what the name should be if it was different from the customer key, and we set it to that full name. And that's an important point. Someone might say, well, okay, that's great. Uh, you changed the country from the code to the name, but what if the user wants to see the code as well? Well, you've got a couple of options. You can go in the DSV and set it so that it is the name dash the code or the code dash the name. You know, some you make some named calculation that works like that. Or you always have the option in some tools of switching between, you know, can I see the actual code or can I see the name for it? And uh, I'll talk more about that in the ProClarity videos that are coming later because that's the tool where you really have that kind of flexibility. Now, so at this point, I have created 
uh, or I have the attributes that I want to use in my hierarchy. Now, this is one place where 2005 and 2008 are slightly different, and that is, for example, notice I don't have postal code in my attributes list. It's over here in the data source view. If I wanted to include that in a hierarchy, in BI Dev Studio 2005, I can drag postal code and drop it here in the hierarchies and levels area, and it works. It starts to create a new hierarchy and puts that in there. And notice, of course, it also adds it to my list of attributes. In BI Dev Studio 2008, you can't do that. You can't drag something from here and drop it in the hierarchies and levels. You have to first bring it into attributes, and once you drop it here, then you can drag it over into hierarchies and levels. At least it's that way in the current build. I don't know uh, why that changed and if that's going to be that way in the final release, but that is the way it is now. But I don't necessarily want postal code in this example. What I want the user to be able to do is very easily drill down from country. Okay, so notice I'm bringing it over and putting it here. And it has new level underneath it. So I want to go from country to, in this case, state province. And I'll simply drop it under country. Now, if you get these in the wrong order, it's not a problem at all. You can simply drag and move above, for example, state province now to country. I'll move it back below. And, in fact, I can drag a new one. For example, I'll go to city next. And notice I could drag it anywhere into the hierarchy that I wanted. But I'll go ahead and drop it here at the bottom. And so I'm going to go from the country to the state to the city. And then I'm going to go all the way down at this point to the individual customer. Now, a couple of things to point out about this. First of all, each hierarchy gets a default name, and it's just called hierarchy, which is typically not necessarily a good name here. So I'm simply going to name this customers. Okay, so this is my customers drill down. Also, each one of these levels, you can change the name. So dim customer I don't think looks very good. I'll simply rename that to just customer. Now, you'll also notice a little warning symbol here. This has to do with those things, uh, these things called attribute relationships. Extremely important, and that's what the next video will be about. I won't get into them here. We'll leave the warning as it is for now. Don't worry about it. But it is an absolutely critical piece to ensuring that your cubes work properly. Okay, so I have built this hierarchical structure. And so at this point, I'm going to save everything and I will go ahead and just do a deploy. So, of course, it goes through that build and then deploy, and then it's going to process as well. And now the deploy uh, processing has started. Sorry, the, the processing has actually started. The deployment uh, is continuing, but it's also beginning the processing piece up on the server. And thanks to the magic of a little editing, it has finished. And if I click on the browser tab now for the dimension, it will allow me to take a look at this new customer's hierarchy that I just created. So here you can see the customer's hierarchy. And this is that all level it starts with. That is just the total for all customers, basically. Um, and that is, by default, something that you can have. You can turn that off with um, with one of the properties, but in a multi-level hierarchy it's a little bit different. I'll talk about that in just a moment. But now, if I expand all, remember the, the first level that I actually put in was country. So even though it was country code, I told it to use the name, and so there are the names of those. Next was state province. So for example, if I expand Australia, you'll see the provinces in Australia. And then it went from the province to the cities, and then from the cities to the individual customers. So if I choose Coffs Harbor, for example, here are the customers in Coffs Harbor. Notice that they are currently sorted by the first letter of their first name, well, just by their first name. And again, you can control that sort order, as I showed in the previous video, and uh, we'll expand on more later. Now, if I drop this down, I still have city 
and country and dim customer by themselves. And if I go to browse the cube at this point, here's what it looks like. I have the customer dimension and if I open this up you will see the customers hierarchy showing up. Now remember in the previous video I also added some display folders so that some of the attributes gender marital status and so forth show up under a different folder it just keeps the list a little bit shorter. Uh, I had originally put country and state province and postal code under geography uh, but since I deleted those and re-added them, I didn't set it back to geography. So I'll leave it as it is for now. But I'll simply take the customer's hierarchy and add it to the columns, or I'm sorry, the rows. And that's one thing about the browser here in Analysis Services or in BI Dev Studio. It doesn't show you the all level in this particular browser. You saw it when I browsed just the dimension. Some tools will just show you the all level to start with. Others will break it down into the members of the first level. I will also take a date hierarchy and just put the years up there. And I'll grab a single measure just so you have a value to view. And I'll just take sales amount. Now again, if I want to go all the way down the customer level, I could have simply grabbed dim customer and brought it over, but there are many customers, and I may be only interested in particular ones. I'll use that same drill down I just used a moment ago, Australia to New South Wales, to the cities, and then the customers within a particular city. So as I scroll through here, you'll notice it's still a fair number, but it's it's certainly not uh, 10,000, 100,000, however many customers you, you actually happen to have. So this is a more common way for people to drill down. They expand from some high level of, of detail to a lower level. Now, I'm going to clear this. There is a, a little eraser icon, clear results, and simply clear everything out. And I mentioned one of the things, uh, one of the best practices is that if you have a, a, um, an attribute in a multi-level hierarchy, you should probably hide that attribute. Here's why. Um, actually, let me get rid of country here. I've actually had cases where uh, customers have come over and said, okay, let's see, I want state province, and they'll grab that out of the hierarchy. Of course, they're not using this particular tool, but they'll do it in another tool. And they'll say, oh, state province. And then they'll come up and say, oh, let's grab country uh, and bring that over. Now they've reversed the hierarchy. It's not wrong. It still works. But you'll notice that for every one of these, of course, there's just one value. The first ones, are they're all Australia. Uh, if I scroll down here, uh, here are some provinces in France. Um, there is one particular tool in ProClarity that this confuses, uh, just one particular way of displaying it. But in general, that's just, it's kind of strange. The other thing is that you still have the problem of someone looking at this and saying, oh, dim customer, well, let's just look at that. And again, this can take, in a really large cube, this could take for a, a very long time to fill up. It could even consume all the memory uh, of whatever client tool they happen to be using and cause a lot of problems. So as you can see here, it's taking a long time just to bring back that list of customers. So best practice is to hide those. So how do you do that? Well, let's go back to dim customer for a moment and go back to the dimension structure. It's very simple. It's one of the properties that's available. So I will take city, which is now part of the hierarchy. And in the properties, you have an attribute attribute hierarchy visible. It's true. You just change that to false. Now, I want to make that change for country and state province, and I'm holding down the control key and dim customer and choosing these. When you make multiple selections over here, the properties list changes and will show you any property that is common amongst those multiple members. Well, attribute hierarchy visible is on all of those, so I'll change it to false once for all uh, of those items. And at this point, 
I will redeploy and then go browse it again in the cube when it's finished. Okay, processing is finished. We'll go to the cube, remember to reconnect because changes have been made. And notice now in the customer dimension, I'll close the measures here and close due date. Notice in customer's dimension, uh, I don't have nearly uh, the set of attributes I had before because I've hidden those. Now just because I hid them, mean, it just means I can't drag them over and work with them manually. But if I use the hierarchy, that still works just fine. I can see them. So it's simply hiding them from being able to do analysis on each of those attributes by itself. You're just hiding the attribute hierarchy. As long as it's part of a multi-level hierarchical structure, it works just fine. Now, there are a couple of properties I want to point out to you quickly. First of all, if I click on the hierarchy itself called customers, I get a list of attributes or of uh, properties here, and one of those is the all member name. You'll notice that before it was just all in parentheses. In fact, I, I, I think it's just all without the parentheses when it's actually displayed. But here you could change this. So, for example, you could change this to all customers because that's really what it is. You can also put this hierarchy in a display folder. I'll go ahead and put it in geography. That's really where it belongs. And if I build this or deploy, since it needs to uh, do a little processing on the server here, then I can jump into the browser and reconnect and notice the all level of course now says all customers. If I happen to go back to the cube and reconnect, you'll notice that a new display folder does pop up. Geography, if I expand that, that's where the hierarchy is. Now back in the dimension, what if for some reason you didn't want an all level? In some cases customers say they don't want that. Sometimes I see on a time dimension they don't want that because they might only have a partial year at the beginning uh, of their time dimension and they of course on the last year they typically only have a partial year until on the end of the day December 31st or whenever they get that last data in. So they say that an all there a total of all the years doesn't really mean anything to them. Well if you want to turn off the all level for a hierarchy period there's a way to do that. If you remember from the previous video on any attribute there is a property called is aggregatable. And I said it simply controls whether or not it has an all level. Well, if you take the first attribute in a multi-level hierarchy, so here's my multi-level hierarchy, but here's the attribute for it. If I turn its is, aggregate, is aggregatable property to false, that's all I have to do, and then redeploy this, then the hierarchy itself no longer will have an all level. So the, it's kind of strange, there's not a property on the hierarchy to turn that off. You have to go do it on the first attribute in that hierarchy. You may say, well, I wouldn't want to do that. But remember, best practice is you've hidden that attribute anyway, so a person's not going to browse by just that attribute. So it really shouldn't matter at this point. So now that processing has finished, I'll go to the browser and again reconnect. And you'll notice that's it. The all level's gone. Uh, I'm at the country level. I, I can't get to an all level this is where it starts. So what have you seen? Well from a usability standpoint I think hierarchies are critical. I think they are absolutely the way to go in working with users so that the the data is useful to them. So I, I think they're absolutely critical for that. You create them simply by dragging and dropping attributes in the right order and I could have easily jumped into the tool here and created a, another hierarchy. I could have said, for example, I want to go from gender to marital status to yearly income. Okay, that may not make a lot of sense, but you know, clearly you could do that, and we can just call this uh, demographics. So yet another hierarchy. And after building these, uh, a really important 
Well, I'm, I'm, the, probably the most important thing you can do after building your dimensions and setting up your hierarchies is this thing called attribute relationships. And that will be the next video. So make sure you watch that one as soon as I post it. Thank you.